Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna to be getting the rims and the uh, tires off of this Alice 175 and getting it prepped up for paint. And then once the paint's done, we'll be putting some new rubber on the rears. So if that's something that you're interested in seeing, stick around, cause it's coming up. Okay, so you've been watching this series, been working on this uh, 175, doing some maintenance items on it. And next up, while we're waiting on some parts for the rest of the uh, other piece of this project is the painting of the centers and the rims. I got a new rim coming for this back left. We're gonna be putting some new rubber on this tractor. So I'm gonna get these uh, taken off and get them loaded up on my trailer so I can take them to the sandblaster. And uh, they'll get those all sandblasted up and prepped. And then I'll paint, uh, primer and paint those. So that's what we're gonna be doing next. Uh, first thing is first, and I've already done this, didn't capture it on uh, video there, but I've got the whole chassis lifted up off of the ground here. I've got two jack stands in the back and I've got two up here in the front. I did go ahead and chalk the pivot point on the front axle uh, just in case uh, something's gonna shift when I pull these rear tires off because they do have fluid in them. So you gotta think about that. Whenever you take one side off, you've lost all of that uh, weight that's holding it down and the other one can literally just pull it right up off of that jack stand. So I have had that happen before. Um, so I went ahead and chalked up that front. Not that that's gonna prevent it, but it won't let it to let it go too far if that would happen to be the case. So this left side, that uh, rim's the one that shot. It has been leaking a little bit. Um, it feels like that it's got more ballast in it than the right. So I'm gonna take it off first and uh, then we'll, we'll go from there with it. So I'm gonna flip over to the time-lapse camera and I'm just gonna zip these off and we'll grab the skid steer uh, once we get them off of there and that's what we used to actually move around. So let's get started. All right, so I ended up using a cherry picker and just put over top of the tire there with a uh, nylon strap. Um, and then I started to unbolt the centers and realized that there's actually nuts on the backside. I kind of forgot about that. It's a little bit different than the W series Alice Chalmers tractors. So I went ahead and just undone the clamps, um, most of them, I guess. I had one of them here that wasn't um, wanting to come off here, so had to get the side grinder out, which you'll see here in just a second. Get that thing cut off so I could get that wedge and ultimately get the tire and the rim out of the way. All right, so I want to cut in here just a bit. You saw in the time lapse, I uh, got the uh, rim and the tire off. I was gonna to try to take this off as one unit, but I forgot on these uh, 100 series tractors that the the actual hub is bolted on on the back side there. So I'm trying to reach around the tire, hold that, and hit the center. That lugs right there was just impossible for a one man show. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and pop that thing off because I can reach around it. Not a big deal. Um, on the other one I had to cut, you saw I had to cut that one bolt off. I got. Uh, four uh, new ones of these um, wedges coming so that will take care of that but it was spinning back up in there so it goes through that uh, it's actually right up through that hole right here and then it's just a square head and it would rest up on the top part of the rim there but it was spinning I was trying to hold it and just wouldn't break loose so just cut it off and got it out of the way uh, the axle seals look good I don't see any residue down in there just got your normal dirt and stuff so that's good um so at this point i'm gonna flip back over the time lapse i'll go ahead and pop this uh, center off of here i think the tractor feels pretty stable earlier i was talking about um the weight distribution and if you had a tire that had more fluid than the other you know it could kind of roll you around there so everything feels good with that um so Happy about that. All right, let's flip over to the time lapse and let's get this rim off. All right, just uh, continue to spin that thing around and uh, grab the nut on the back side there so that we can get that separated. I'm just scraping off all the excess dirt and stuff that I was not able to get during the power wash piece of it. And then grab the uh, skid steer with the forks. As you can see right here, Lifted up that tire. I just could not set it down all the way. I wanted to try to flip over that cherry picker and the weight. I was afraid it was going to, going to uh, bend it. Same method on the other side. Went ahead and separated the 
the rim from the center with those wedges uh, being removed first and then what, all you got to do is just hit it with that hammer and it'll pop right off of there and then come back in and remove the center just like I did on the other side put all my hardware together and cleaned up the mess it's amazing the amount of stuff that gets caught up in there that you can't see and then while we're doing it we're going to slide on over to the front and go ahead and take off the two front uh, wheels as well all right well I got all of the tires um, and wheels off of this uh, tractor as you saw there got my center set out make sure I got all of my bolts and nuts back and the wedges and the hardware to go along with that a couple of those wedges are uh, pretty bad shape so I'm going to be replacing those um, and then the center hubs here I will wire brush and paint those right here I'm not going to sandblast them like I'm going to do the rims in the center so got all that squared away got a few lug nuts that need to be replaced as well once I got those things off and I just kind of cleaned up what dirt was on the uh, rear housing here so got that squared away I guess next step here is wire brushing those components and getting them ready uh, for some primer so I'll probably go ahead and do that now and uh, then we'll take uh, once that rim gets here we'll take everything to the sandblaster and they can get that sandblast and then I'll be ready to go with it. So anyway, let's get the wire brush ran over the centers here and get those cleaned up and ready for some primer. All right, so just take the wire brush on the end of the grinder here and I've been getting those from Harbor Freight. They're much cheaper. Uh, they do last fairly long, which I was kind of surprised when I first uh, started getting them and they do a really good job just taking care of cleaning the hub off, put a jack up underneath there to hold it so it wouldn't spin on me. Likewise on the other side, got all that dressed up and ready for some primer. All right, so I have wire brushed both the front hubs and the rear uh, centers. I've got those cleaned up at this point. I still need to do the lug uh, or the bolts there for the uh, hubs and I will do those over on the bench where I can hold hold it in the vise so anyway that's that um, I'm going to go ahead and tape some of that off and get ready for some primer on these and I'll just throw some sheets over and some uh, painters tape just to hold everything uh, in place and some clothes pins and then we'll be good so I'm going to get that done next and then we should be able to shoot a little primer on it all right, so I got blankets laid out everywhere to protect uh, the rest of the tractor, and then I taped off around the hubs there on the bottom of that spindle just to make sure we didn't get any overspray on it. And then just got set up here and shot some primer on those hubs. All right, so you just saw on time lapse there, I got the uh, primer shot on these front hubs. Um, I was going to do them all at once, but I didn't have enough blankets and everything to cover up both ends. So we got both sides primered. Uh, just with a spray can primer, a Rust-Oleum product. Uh, likewise, over here on this side. We'll let that dry good, and then I'll come back in here uh, with the cream, and uh, we'll shoot. go ahead and shoot the white uh, on both of these. And then once that's done, then we'll go ahead and pull all of our blankets and everything off of here, and we'll slide back, and we'll do that back half. So... Um, that's the plan right now. We'll let this dry, flip back over time lapse when it's ready for color, and we'll get that uh, shot and we'll slide to the back. All right, so shooting the color on these front hubs here really turned out nice. That's coat one, and then we flip over here to the back side, go ahead and do the same thing with our moving blankets, try to protect everything and protect the floor. Put a little tape on the outer edge there blocked off my holes and then we're going to get ready to shoot some primer on 
on that as well on both sides. Once the uh, primer is down, we're going to go ahead and shoot our color here in just a few hours after the primer was installed. All right, so I'm just about finished up here with the centers. Uh, you just saw on the time lapse there, we painted the two back uh, hubs. I uh, got those just coated once. I'll put two more coats on those, but there's really no sense in showing the time lapse on that. Pretty straightforward what I'm doing. Taped off the edge. The back side of those are orange. Um, I assume that that is original from the factory. The tractor doesn't look like that it has had a paint job since new, so I just kind of taped off the outer edge of that. And then uh, here's the front hubs. Now that does have three coats on it. Uh, it is wet currently and it is drying, so you don't want to touch that for a while. Likewise with this one. And then here is the other hub on the back side. So when I go to do the second coat, I will rotate these. I'll have to put probably a, a bar or something in the uh, holes there and twist it. I'll rotate it 180 degrees. That way I can make sure that I get it coated well all the way around. So that's those. If you recall, they uh, were pretty rough. There's the centers. We'll have those uh, sandblasted and then I'll put those in the paint booth and shoot those. So it's really gonna turn out nice. Couple that with the uh, new tires on it, we'll be set. Anyway, uh, that's that for now. Um, next piece of it, I'm gonna be taking those to the sandblaster and then we'll come back and I'll go over the paint piece of that in the paint booth. All right, so I just made a drop off here at the new blast. Uh, Sandblasting place. We got those tires on that 175 done. Uh, dropped off here, so we'll pick them up in a couple days and be ready to go. So we'll see them when I get done. All right, so we're back here to Seymour to pick up our sandblasted uh, parts here. So we're ready to pull in here to New Blast and get those picked up. Once we get them loaded up here, get them unloaded back at the house and get them ready for some paint so see what they look like and I'll uh, show you that here in just a minute all right so it looks like they got our thing done here it all turned out nice we're gonna get them things loaded up here get that squared away and there's their sandblaster ginormous I think I fit a whole semi trailer in there so Anyway, let's get them loaded up. All right, well, we made it back uh, from Seymour there, from New Blast, uh, where I picked up everything, as you saw there. Um, man, it really did turn out nice, just like everything else I've had done from them. So uh, I'm going to get these things unloaded. And behind me here, I've got my paint booth kind of... Uh, ready to roll here i just got to inflate it if you watch any of my other videos you've seen that thing in action so it's just a inflatable paint booth I'll turn on the blowers back there in the greenish yellow and that will blow everything up and then i can get in there and paint and not have overspray all over the place so we'll be getting that set up um here shortly uh back over here towards the bench i get slid over there real quick a couple things going on here in preparation i've got for one i've got a shaker paint shaker here i've already got the primer um, shook up here so i'm going to let that kind of hang out there until i'm ready to pour it here in just probably 15 20 minutes and i got my uh, paint gun ready to go i use those disposable uh, paint hoppers, which are from Harbor Freight. It's about the best way to go. The only thing you have to clean is just your gun when you get finished. And then I use these booties to uh, slide over my shoes when I'm in there. And I can take those off and truck any overspray or anything into the uh, or onto the concrete. And I've got a paint uh, suit that I haven't got down from the loft yet. And then I picked up one of these masks here off of Amazon. 
It's gonna be the first time trying this. I've used it doing some other things here around the shop. I'm trying to get it opened up here. It's just a full mask. Just a full mask here and uh, that's what it looks like. So we're gonna give that thing a shot because all the other times I've been painting, I've just worn safety glasses and a uh, breathing apparatus. And then I've got basically my nose and eye area all covered or uh, exposed rather to the elements there. So I get a lot of overspray. So we're gonna try that thing out, see how that works. And uh, might end up having to maybe purchase another one of those. Not sure yet, we'll just see how it goes. So anyway, that's what's, uh, Coming up here, um, that's the 175 that all, all these rims and tires are going on that we're getting ready to paint. So uh, tonight's task is to get it in primer. And uh, it won't take too long. Just gotta get everything kind of set up on my scaffolding, which is over there on the other side of the barn, right there. We'll get that uh, stuff laid out and then um, shoot it. So won't it take, won't take too long. I'm gonna flip over to time-lapse camera uh, when I go to shoot those um, so that you can kind of see that process. And it'll be a lot easier than trying to have my phone in here and video that at the same time. So anyway, that is where we're at. Let's uh, get those parts unloaded, get them ready to go, and we'll get the booth inflated and get ready. It looks like Prince is ready also. He's been hanging out here by the tractor because he's wanting one of these. Got these little uh, beef flavored wraps that he really enjoys. And you can tell he's eyeing them now that he can see them. So might give him one of those here in a minute. But anyway, let's get rolling. All right, let's slide it in the paint booth here. I wanna show you how I got things laid out. Um, those rear tires are quite interesting. They're fairly heavy. How to use the skid steer to get them in here. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out, but we're going to give it a shot. There's this set. Got the centers. Got the dog. I'll get him out here before we start painting. Got everything kind of set up. I should be able to shoot most of the rims uh, from one side, and then I'll have to try to figure out how I'm going to do the uh, inside part. So, let's kind of play it by ear here. All my small parts are laid out here. Went ahead and put the uh, bolts here for the front wheels in a box. Everything else is laid out. Of course, everything's gonna have to be flipped over. That's the downside to laying stuff on something to paint it. If you hang it, then you can kind of get all the way around it. But in this case, um, I've got to come back in here to shoot two sides anyway on some stuff. So really not that big of a deal. We're talking small amounts of paint. And then uh, here's the front tires for the 175. Now this rubber here is gonna get reused. So um, when I paint that, I will have to come around on the outer edge here and clean that off with uh, paint thinner to keep everything nice and clean. And uh, these are for that D17 uh, that you saw. So I'll have a new fresh cream paint on those when we get done. So anyway, that's that. Uh, I'm gonna flip over to time-lapse camera and we'll try to catch most of this in here. It won't take me too long to actually shoot it. And just all the prep work. That's why it costs so much to paint tractors and other things because you got so much labor involved. Um, when you start looking at it compared to what the price of the paint is, it's kind of crazy. Anyway, let's look over time lapse and get the primer shot. All right, so here we are in the paint booth, just shooting our first coat of primer on uh, all the components. And I'll have to flip everything over that I could not reach and uh, shoot primer on those as well. So there were the D17 fronts. Not worried about overspray on those. That's getting new rubber. And here are the 175 fronts. So I'll be cleaning those off here shortly from the overspray. And then just getting in there and getting those rear rim shot good on both sides. 
And then the good old dreaded cleanup. Seems like you can get in there and shoot the paint pretty quick, but getting everything in the paint booth and then getting everything cleaned up once you're done seems to take the majority of the time. Um, unless you're shooting a whole tractor, then you can spend a couple hours in there getting everything uh, shot. So just very little cleanup, got everything laid back out. I gotta stick my booties back on so that I can get back into the booth to get everything unloaded. I got overspray there. As you can see on the floor of that paint booth, I put down some plastic just to catch the overspray. And then right here, cleaning off all of the rubber. I uh, just use some paint thinner, get all of that um, cleaned off good, and then we'll flip these over and we'll do the same thing on the back side as well. I've not really found a good way to tape rims off like that that the tires are going to stay on. I've tried to use a plain card around the rim. I've tried to use cardboard and just just haven't found anything good that works. Use the little Alice 919 with the trailer on it. Got it set up here and then we're going to roll out those rear tires and get them propped up against that trailer so that they can dry. All right, so I got all my stuff cleaned up, paint's done, and uh, you just saw there on the time lapse, I rolled out those extremely heavy rear tires and uh, got them pushed over here so they can dry. That's the only downside to having a inflatable paint booth. It's nice to store it. If I was gonna be uh, painting on a weekly or daily basis, I would certainly invest in a an actual paint booth itself, but to be able to just fold this thing up and get it out of the way when I'm not using it, it's really nice. However, you gotta deal with some inconveniences of objects that uh, are heavy, like these tires that you can't just sit there and move, um, you know, real easily. So if this was a regular paint booth, we would have let that thing just sit in there uh, for, you know, the rest of the night until I'm ready to paint tomorrow. So anyway, got everything rolled out here, cleaned up the front tires. Uh, pretty decent there and uh, those will look really nice with that new paint on there. There's going to be some uh, primer that's still left to do. Once these are all dry, we'll flip all of these over outside of our bolts for the front wheels. We'll flip everything over and uh, shoot some primer on that. So, And then on the insides of the tires, I've got a little bit there to do as well just for cleanup. Just like right up here on this side. So. What I might do on that is just take my uh, spray can and hit that um, instead of mixing everything up just to shoot that little spot. So anyway, yeah, that's it. That's it for right now. Um, those tires, like I said earlier, the ones that have all the overspray on it, I'm putting new rubber on that. So um, didn't really worry about what's going on. Those will get yanked off and we'll get new rubber. And uh, It'll look sharp. So anyway, um, we'll probably flip back on here uh, tomorrow when we're getting ready to um, finish up some of the primer. Let's kind of see how that goes. I'll capture everything that I can on this and uh, let you see it. All right, so I got my first coat of cream on the wheels and the hardware. And I had to go through on the front wheels because the rubber is not getting replaced. And I uh, had to wipe all that down with some paint thinner. I've tried different methods to try to tape around that. And it just seems like by the time you spend all that, you still got some blood through and it's just easier to just be careful when you're putting it on and then just wipe it down like that. So that's what I've been doing uh, on tractors for several years. Uh, so this is 
course, just one coat on one side. We'll have to flip everything over, <coughs> excuse me, as far as the hardware goes. The big rears will get taken care of at a later date. And then these are the two fronts that's gonna go on that D17. So I'll shop both sides of those uh, rims as well. So we're in pretty good shape. I forgot the centers back here. So those are gonna turn out nice. Um, I'll roll those over, shoot, and then uh, do another coat here on the back side as well. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with that whole process again. It's basically exactly what you just saw, um, just three more times. So a little bit time consuming, but man, the end product really does look sharp. So anyway, uh, that's that for right now. Uh, we'll cut back on here whenever I'm getting ready to um, probably put the front tires on, get some of the centers and stuff squared away. Um, and then uh, yeah, we'll be in pretty good shape. Actually, I've got to paint the uh, centers on those rear spin out, so I might capture that in time lapse or something. But Either way, I've got that uh, done for right now, and we'll uh, be back when we get ready to put everything together. All right, so I got the uh, third coat put on these uh, center rims here, and I got all that stuff done, and uh, all of the hardware as well is painted and completed. And I'll have touch up once that goes on. And then I've got my front rims uh, completed as well. Got all of my tires cleaned off. So that leaves the rear tires and rims, which I've got in the spray booth right now. I literally just got done shooting them. And uh, you can see that there. I'm just waiting on some of the overspray to get filtered out of there. And once that is done, we'll open up our entry here and we will roll them out and prop them up against my little wagon here. And that will hold them, allow them to drive. And by the way, I'm using a little 919 Hydro to, to pull that wagon. So, worked out pretty good to build a maneuver around inside the shop here. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna slide inside there on the back and just double check and see what we've got going on as far as the overspray goes. We should be getting pretty close. It's pretty obvious once you get in there. It's hard to see through this. Let's go around the back here and show you kind of what this paint looks like. My fan black one is the actual filtration system, and that yellowish green is for the uh, blowers or for the uh, same uh, top right. So this here is just a clean room, as they call it. I don't use it, but it's a pretty good size area. You can see I got like 12 foot ceilings in here. If I were gonna buy another one of these, I'd probably do it without this room. I could utilize this additional five foot or so that we've got right here. So there comes the back inlet, filters through this, pushes into the main cavity here. Let's see what we look like in here. Yep, it's looking pretty good. You can see just a little bit of haze, nothing too crazy. You probably can't even pick it up. But here we are. Got them all sprayed. And moving these tires around here was not fun. I had to do, move it from one side to the other so I could get both sides of the rim. I got new rubber coming for this, so don't worry about that overspray. It'll be here this week. And uh, I'll have all that cleaned off of there and it will look nice, have the new, new rubber on that. So anyway, let's flip over to our time-lapse camera go ahead and shut down our filtration system here. Flip over time lapse, we'll get these things uh, rolled out of here and then we'll deflate the beef. All right, so we're getting ready to open up the uh, front here and get everything rolled out and uh, set up so that it can dry. So that's gonna wrap up this video uh, right now for just the painting portion. The next video will be the installation. So thanks for watching, hit like, subscribe, share this video, and we'll see you next time.